to get them broke down to where they're a little more uniform, just so that you don't have any hot spots in that. Yeah. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be giving them laws, but it's your boys will be talking about this. You, you want to, the earlier you can start the fire, a big fire, the more coal you'll have right. later for your fire. So, so Alan, could you give us a timeline of, of I mean, we, we've got now, we started at fire at 3 or 3. I don't know when we're supposed to eat, but the timeline of, of the turkey, of the fire, the turkey, the vegetables, and the bread. Now, I would assume that you do want to go around 6 or 7 p.m. So if you go to camp at 3, like I said, we can do the fire going. It's going to take you an hour, hour and a half to, to get coals to cook on. Um, and then during that time, no pressure, you know, your vegetables will take you 20 to 30 minutes. You know, it took me about 15 or so, and like I said, I'm pretty good tonight. So, you know, I'd give yourself 20 to 30 minutes to prep your vegetables hot. Um, the turkey, you're just taking out a plastic bag so it's hot a little bit of liquid. Um, so, it's good on it, so it's going to be good to go. So, like I said, when you first get in the camp, you're cold. Um, and you're going to allow yourself three hours to cook on the turkey. So, if you want to eat a six feet of cooking at three, I think cold's going to play by two minutes. Um, or you're fiery, you know, and you're going to eat a six. Say what your brother likes, because the only He says they'll be in camp at two. He says you'll be in, in camp. You'll be able to start your fire at two. I'd have if it was me. I'd have my my coals on around two. I'd, I'd start my turkey at like three o'clock. You can't overcook it. You can undercook it, and that's a disaster. You can't really overcook it. So get it in. Get your turkey on. You got like once your turkey's in the coals, you got the coals. You can kind of relax because the vegetables don't take that long. They're not that bad. It takes maybe an hour, an hour and a half of, of total prep time for your vegetables and your bread. So all you're going to have is vegetables, bread, and turkey. It's the turkey that, that is the real turkey in the room. <laughs> um, I, this is where I would have the support to make sure they're there at 2 starting the fire. Just so what if, what if we don't get there until 3 30? Right. We don't yeah, that, and that's, I, I don't understand all the logistics of how all that's working out. Cause I, but that was my concern with Tom today. If they're pulling into camp at 3.30 and you, you've got a fire site at, at 7.30, you're not going to be able to cook your get your fire going and cook your turkey for three hours and do this. It's not going to happen. He says we can get it started earlier than that. And so that would be my big message to you guys is when you get into camp or have somebody in camp, get your fire going, get your turkey going, get your coals. And then, then you only have maybe an hour, an hour and a half. And then get your bread dough going because that's going to take an hour and a half to two hours on the raise. It's going to depend on the as well. And you know you're 30, 40 minutes of pain. Did, did we answer your question? family cook a half a turkey and half a turkey and do it like that and then the turkeys come in a foil thing they're already pre-juiced and everything and once you cut it in half you're going to lose a lot of the juice a lot of the flavoring of the turkey and then you rewrap it and you're going to lose a lot of that so we thought well let's just leave it in the foil and not cut them in half plus it's going to be a big project for whoever makes these boxes to cut 30 turkeys in half and, and, and things so we kind of I think so. That's, we thought that. If time becomes an issue, you know, you can't bust the turkey in half. That's, I cut that one this morning. It wasn't too tough. He's got one, right? Yeah. Here. And it, it was cut in half. It, 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 was, it was not that hot. So you kind of, that's a half a turkey with the vegetables around it. And that was the initial plan, was to, to do that, to have a half a turkey. But now we've decided to cook the turkey separately. Combine the groups and cook the vegetables, and you'll have two pots of vegetables, so and two pots the, for for breads, and then one pot for your turkey. So that's the turkey in foil. That's a half of turkey. Um, and like I say, it held all right. You know, we got still juices in the in the foil. Yeah, and yeah. Right. I'm, I'm kind of thinking of the people. That it's just going to be simplistic, and yeah. Well, as an individual group, they could. But they're in it. You get contained.
decontamination factors, and then you got the things you can wash and wash and wash and knives and yeah, sanitation issues that way as well. But, you know, if it came worse to worse, you could split it in half and do it in a shallower pot. We cooked this one in a shallow pot. Just for clarification, You shouldn't. I mean, just kind of watch it. You'll see, um, you know, as you turn that, especially if there's a little wind blowing, you'll see the coals will cook down, and the ash is going to blow away from them, so you'll see you got little tiny embers on there, and you see you're getting down, and, you know, go ahead and reload it. So, that's, so you got to kind of keep an eye on the pot so you keep it cooking, and you're not trying to restart the thing every half hour. That, that's what I found is, is you can, you'll have coals on the top, and you can just kind of put your hands around it, and if it's not radiating heat, you need to put some, take those coals off, put some new ones on. And and then maybe once in a while, the sides of your pot. And then every once in a while, yeah, pull it out. And just make sure that there's good heat going on each one, a third and two thirds. That's what I, and keep it a hot third and two thirds. And if it, if it cools down, starts cooling down, you're not feeling it radiate, get some more coals, it's time for, for more coals. Just keep it hot. Mine, I think last night kind of radiated down. I had to go to a piano recital too, but I had my nephew working on it while I was doing that. And things. But I, I thought it'd be done. I don't get to eat at 7.30. I mean, it's 8.30 to 9. Even you can run that Dutch at 400, 450 degrees and, and really not you know, mess it up too bad. Like I say, as long as you keep some liquid in the pot and so that you know, you're not on a dry. That, that's something I did too. I put a little, they, they were talking three cups of water with your, your, your uh, potatoes, vegetables. your vegetables. I put too much water in probably. I wasn't going to burn anything. And so you add bouillon cubes and your water. And then, uh, and then your vegetables in there. You can just keep, as long as there's water and it doesn't dry out, you're going to be pretty hot. And you can keep it pretty hot. It's the lack of heat that would be the problem, not the, with, with wood, it's the lack of heat that's probably the problem, not the um, too much heat, but you don't want to, you want to be careful on the burn. Yeah. You can stack the coals over on the outside and set the Dutch oven into the center of them? I did. He can tell the you that. I, I put a pile in the middle, kind of. So you do it. Yeah. That's where... Um, and that's, like I said, I try and kind of push them out just a little bit so you don't have all that heat, you know, right in the center. And also, you know, if colds become an issue, and last night, you know, like I said, I had six Dutch ovens going there, big 16 inches. Um, but these are designed also, cover that back up again, to where you can stack them and, and cook so the top heat of this becomes the bottom heat of this one and utilize those coals. I mean, I've had them stacked, you know, 12 Dutch ovens tall. Um, as long as you know what's what's where and where the heat needs to be, you know, so you're not having to check the, the second pot <laughs> from the bottom, you know, to, and trying to move, you know, liquid cobbler and stuff that's sloshing around on you a little bit. But, um, and I do that as long as you don't have, you know, so much heat here that you've got too much heat for the bottom of this one. But like I say, where you're just running a couple, three Dutch ovens, you know, it shouldn't be too big an issue. I'd stack maybe if you're doing two pots of potatoes and a vegetable dish. Um, you, know, you can put those together and I'd put your turkey, you know, I'd have some pretty good heat on it. It could go on top of your potatoes as well. Um, the apples, they were just going to wrap those in foil and put those into the, the coals of the fire. Um, so you don't have to worry about that um, so much on that. And then your bread. And that's the one where you got to really watch because you want minimal heat on your the bottom of your bread pot. Um, so I probably wouldn't stack it on top of another pot where you got good heat on the lid. It'd probably be too much for your bottom heat of your bread oven there. So I'd probably keep it off to the side. But but I'd probably stack you know your your potato dishes together. And you could kind of build them that way a little bit and consolidate on the charcoal consumption. Yeah, I didn't do that last night. I just set them separate each separate pile but also if you're using foil on the ground the more weight that you, you know, you're going to push those dutches down into those coals too more so so you got to watch that that weight factor right well. i was on concrete and see up there you'd be on dirt on dirt so if you ever yeah, i i found it probably that i don't want anyone burning their stuff but i found a lack of heat was my problem with wood rather mm -hmm. than not rather than too much heat and you've got a few weeks between now and then, you know, I can get out of your Dutch ovens and practice a little bit, you know, and get where you're comfortable.